Hey folks, so my schedule this week is a little bit mixed up because of some uh, things that I have to take care of. So uh, you're probably actually going to get an extra video, but instead of uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we're going to have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and probably Saturday again, or maybe Sunday. But anyway, so today it's just a little fun little thing here. I picked up these modules. I think I showed them to you in one of my unboxing videos or mailbag videos. And I've also showed them to you in a kit that I built that used one of these as, as a, a sound maker. And these things are called a KD9561. Um, they're pretty ubiquitous. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on AliExpress. You can probably get them on eBay. And I just look for that. There's, there's also others like CK9561, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're all the same thing. And it's just a little circuit board with a, a chip on board and a little blob. And they make noises. So this is um, this is a, about the best diagram I've found. Uh, you just need a transistor to drive a speaker. And the base goes on here and the emitter down to negative and you know, we've got a capacitor across the input which is always a good thing. And then supply three volts and then put a resistor up here between 100k and 390k. And they suggest 240k for a nice value in between. And then they say here, like the select the select one is this pin, select two is this pin. So that's select one and select two. They've got them marked here, K1 and K2. And if they're both open, you get an alarm whistle. If your fire alarm, it's, it's a pin select one and at, at, you know, VCC. And select two is not connected. Ambulance voice, select one at zero. And select two is not connected. It actually doesn't matter, I don't think. Machine gun sounds, select one doesn't matter, and select two goes up to VCC. Let's try it out. Um, so I did take the liberty of going ahead and building that circuit. So there it is, there's a speaker. I put in a 2N3904 as an MTN transistor there. I just put the leads directly into the board where they said, and then I have the collector coming off going to the speaker. I put the capacitor in across here. This is going to give me the opportunity to actually attach some power to it. So I can attach a power across there. These are my select lines. And right here is where I'm going to put the resistor. And we'll start here around 220 because that's what they said, or 240 they suggest. So it's the closest I can get with this little box here. And we'll attach this up the best we can to here and here. You know, when you do go to solder one of these up, I mean, these these single-sided phenolic boards, they're real crap. Uh, they really are. So be very careful. I mean, so the wires I put in, like, for, for the capacitor and for these wires to connect up here, I put them in from the bottom up. And uh, the transistor goes in from the top down because it's not going to be very much force on the transistor. These here, I use very flexible wire. The thing is, you know, this, this stuff peels off the phenolic, the, the traces peel off the phenolic really easy. And it, it doesn't help that you have to apply heat and that sort of weakens the glue as well. Oh, okay, and then I have my little, little power supply that we built up a couple of weeks back. I got that over here. I've got it set up for, uh, set it up here for three volts, which is the suggested voltage. Finicky little knob there, but I mean, we don't have to be precise. Yeah, so that's good enough, I imagine. And we'll attach my leads. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this has no off position. There is one pin there that I experimented around with uh, years ago. That pin up there is not mentioned in anything, but I think if you ground that, it shuts the thing up. I don't know if it's supposed to or not, or whether you're just shorting something out internally. But uh, anyway, let's get, let's get some power attached on here. Now, turn your volume down. I guess I could put my hand over it like this. So this here is supposed to be an alarm whistle. Let's see what happens if we, if we change the resistance. Okay, as the resistance goes down, the frequency goes up. Look at this. Just put my hand in between the leads. I think that's more like an alarm whistle. It's 470 ohms there. Well, that's all. That's I guess that's like a siren. Maybe an ambulance siren. 
particularly annoying, isn't it? Okay, so let's uh, let's try the fire alarm. So we've got to get select one. Shut up, Alexa. Alexa. Alexa, turn the music off. <laughs> Okay, um, like one to, to five volts, it's supposed to give us a fire alarm. Interesting. Okay, so that's one to zero, so it's an ambulance. And this is supposed to be a machine gun. That doesn't sound much like a machine gun to me. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you could have a lot of fun, especially, I, th I think kids, young kids would enjoy that very much. But I could see way, like if you had a microprocessor hooked up to this, a couple of analog switches to change the resistor values, and then switch between different sounds at different points in time, you, you can make quite a variety of sounds, maybe to go along with a, a, a game of some sort. Um, yeah, these <laughs> pretty interesting little modules, that's it. So that's it for today, guys. The, the KD9561. Uh, you, you know, you go up to AliExpress. I'll leave a link uh, down in, in below here. But, you know, they usually sell them in a package of 10 and uh, for three or four bucks with the shipping and everything like that. So, and that's Canadian. Probably getting them at about uh, 25 or 30 cents a piece. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, just a quick one for today. We'll see you later. Bye bye.